it's a fact. Once people switch from a stern drive to a V drive, they rarely go back. So let's check in with Senior VP of Worldwide Sales, Scott Crutchfield, to see why a V drive really is the better choice. Hi. I'm Scott Crutchfield with Mastercraft Boats. I'm Senior Vice President of Worldwide Sales. I'm here to shed some light on some I.O. and V-Drive differences for you. First thing that we're going to talk about is going to be safety. Lower unit, bad. This dude, as you come up and you swim, and you're wanting to climb in the back of the boat, what's the first thing that you're going to come up to? It's not going to be the swim platform. It's going to be the lower unit. You're going to hit it. Your feet, you're going around. It's dangerous. You go from that. To a V-drive, and what do you have? You have a prop that's literally a foot and a half underneath the boat. It is so far that even when I reach, I can't get there, and I'd have to get my foot past a rudder to be able to get to it. So it's almost a safety piece before you could even get to that. That's the first thing you hit on an I.O. as a prop. And that'd be the furthest thing that you'd be able to hit on a V-drive or an inboard. The second topic that I want to talk about in safety is bow rise, okay? This boat, being an I.O., typically will have eight and a half degrees of bow rise versus what you get with a uh, V-drive, which is going to be four degrees of bow rise. The reason for that is, is because the motor actually has to couple all the way back to the very back of the transom, plus a lower unit. When it sticks all the way out, being that's the farthest thing from the back of the boat, it has to literally lift that whole boat up until it gets enough pressure, can it plane and drop over. Literally, what I'm talking about is the prop is underneath the boat versus the prop sticking out two and a half feet from the bottom of the boat. Meaning this is going to lift the boat quicker, that's going to drag the boat out longer to plane. All right, so what we're going to talk about now is, is design, okay? One of the biggest misperceptions that we actually have out there versus the runabout industry with lower units and IOs and such is the ride, okay? So what I want to talk to you about a little bit is the differences between how a IO or a runabout is designed versus an inboard or a V-drive. So I'm going to try to tighten this up to make it simple and easy. Bottom line is, is that all boats are designed basically from the bow to the stern as a variable degreed bottom, meaning we go from 30 degrees to 16 degrees in a typical I.O. What we get with the V-Drive is going to be somewhere between 30 to 13, maybe to 9 degrees. But the difference is, is that people look at the back of the boats and they always see a big deep V and they go, wow, that gives a much better ride than what I would have in a V-Drive because it's shallower. Not true. Your ride comes from where the water breaks, okay, underneath the hull. In an I.O., the water will break in a much further back position versus a V-drive. Again, where that motor is placed and the prop underneath the boat versus a prop outside on a lower unit. So what I'm trying to say is, is that if we look at it in an I.O., um, you're going to see that the water is going to break somewhere between, let's call it here, and back to here, okay? And what that's going to do is, is in that distance, you're going to find that that bottom goes to, let's call it 18 degrees of dead rise, somewhere around this area. Well, in that point, what you're going to find is, is the differences between when we go to a V-drive, what you actually have is a V-drive, the water breaks further forward, okay? And what I'm saying is, is that if we start at 30 degrees also, and we go to 13 degrees, that if the water's going to break in a further forward point, we're going to be somewhere around 16 to 18 degrees of dead rise. We're all aiming at that same number of where the ride of the boat's going to be. So what happens is there is no benefit to an I.O. that looks deeper at the transom versus the depth of where the boat breaks in the water of a V-drive. Because having the prop underneath the boat pushes where the water breaks further forward. So that's going to be somewhere around midship of the, of the boat. So we're probably somewhere between 18 to 20 degrees of dead rise in the middle of the boat where you hit the wakes. But the fact really remains, it rides just as good or better than an I.O. All right, so lastly, what we're gonna talk about is performance. Definitely the one advantage that an I.O. has over an inboard or a V-drive is speed. And how you get that is that they have the ability to trim that lower unit up 
to get more speed. It creates less drag, more speed. But frankly, what we do is we design boats not only for less bow rise, tighter turning uh, radiuses, but also what's behind the boat, okay? The wake shape, the wakes, the safety into it, the turning, the handling, all that. Performance wise, when we really look at an IO, you have to ask yourself, how are you gonna spend your time in the boat with your family? Tubing, skiing, wakeboarding, surfing, what? The safety attributes, the handling attributes, all those type of things are really, really important to us. That's what we focus on. I don't know if it's worth it to you if you go five miles an hour faster or not, but here's the way we look at it. It's all about speed. It's nothing about behind the boat. There's a lot of things that we do that all kind of fit in that category of performance. Handling, acceleration, no bow rise, those are the things that we actually look at that we think that are probably better attributes into the performance category than just top end speed. Bottom line is, a V-Drive can do anything and everything that an I.O. can do. But yet, the funny part of it is, an I.O. can't do everything that a V-Drive can do. That's the bottom line.